Why were you parked there, not charging? Excuse us, sir. We're saving the planet. Please wait. This thing is awesome. Full power. She boogies. Traction control. There we go. Full beans. 40. 50. bit of a tight squeeze here with this rider truck but whoa yeah come on out sequoia hello good morning and welcome back to the kyle connor youtube channel today we are just running some errands we got stuff to do we got to get cars registered i want to get the leaf on the road i want to drive it for the first time legally i want to uh we got a lot to do let's let's let me walk you through everything that we have to go on so we have the rivian r1t right here with the trailer on the back I need to get the trailer tire patched. If you watched our last video, bringing the Range Rover down to service, we had a, a slow leak in the tire. So I'm gonna bring this to discount tire, step one. Then we're gonna come back here. We're gonna put the leaf, which is unfortunately all the way at the end of this line in the garage, on the trailer, strap it down, and bring the trailer and the leaf up to uh, where we get our VIN verifications done. That's basically where it says, this is the VIN number associated with the car. We're then gonna take the trailer and the leaf and their titles to the DMV and get both registered. The trailer uh, is expired by almost two months and the leaf has no license plates at all, which is why I'm putting that one on the trailer. So if we get pulled over, the cop might just say, unhitch and leave it on the side of the road because that's not road legal but hopefully by the end of today, everything will be good. Then we're gonna jump in the lucid air towards the afternoon and bring this down to Colton's shop where we're actually gonna be shooting a video to see what we should do about the paint on this car. If you haven't been following, this has a really, really thin layer of paint. Too thin almost for Colton to do a full in-depth paint correction. Pretty scary. And we're gonna see if we can maybe PPF it and hide some of the swirls. Peter, our friend who owns this car, who's loaned it to us, uh, is trusting Colton with his judgment as to the best thing to do to protect the paint. So we're gonna figure that out today. And then we're gonna jump in the Mercedes EQE and bring that back home. So plenty to do. Back here, we have a pile of Mountain Pass performance parts to go onto the Model S and the Model 3. Actually, tomorrow, we should be putting the big brakes onto the Model S. So what I might end up doing, because we have to pull the wheels off anyway, is putting the arrows on this and maybe shooting a range test tomorrow before we do that, just so I can get one log of the arrows. I'm not sure if the big brakes will fit with the arrow wheels back on the Model S. Anyway, the leaf is kind of buried in here. We have the snow tires for the Nokian snow tires for the Audi e-tron, some things to get out of the way. But first step is we gotta get the trailer over to uh, get patched. Now, I don't know what the Rivian is charged up to. Actually, the last time we drove this was when we came back from dropping the leaf off, just a, or sorry, the Range Rover off just a couple days ago. And it looks like we are at 36% state of charge. So I think that's plenty to do some just towing around town, no issues at all. We have a friend who's actually borrowing the truck this evening, so I may run it by the charger just to top it up for him. Uh, we really need to get our home charging sorted. So let's call the electrician today. What do you say? No way. No way? You don't think it will happen? Really gonna do that today? I think we should do it today. There's a lot we really need to do. Also, this tire is the one with the uh, low air pressure. However, yeah, you can see it barely got anything in there. However, um, because there's no weight on the trailer, you can't really tell. We just need to bring it a mile down the road. Uh, and this wheel is definitely holding up the weight. What do you think? Should we just drive it a mile without putting air in it? Ooh, that's really risky. I don't think so. We're going tops 15 miles an hour if we take back roads. 15 miles an hour, where are we driving? Maybe 50 miles an hour, I don't know. Either way, it's hooked up to the Rivian. This thing's getting pulled one way or another. Let's just send it on down. There's no weight on the trailer. It's got another axle to hold it up. We're just gonna bring it down the road to Discount Tire, get it patched, and then we'll find new adventures. Well, just heading on our way to Discount Tire. Um, yeah, thing tows great. Can't even feel that issue with the uh, low tire back there at all. Looking good, feeling good. Just right down the road over here. Not harming anything, I would say. Don't try this at home. We left home, so it's totally fine. Let's go get this thing patched and then we can get the leaf on the road. I'm so excited. I got the title right here for it. So we can get it in my name and on the road ready for leaf adventures. Look who's back there behind me. I see Alyssa in the smart car cruising top down. Perfect day for it, 73 degrees and sunny. 
So let's go take care of some business. Hopefully Discount Tire doesn't have a line, but that's why Alyssa's in the smart car. In case they take a little while, we can go get some food or go get the title to the trailer, which is at the office. We can figure out something to do. A little bit of a tight squeeze here with this rider truck, but whoa, yeah, come on out, Sequoia. Welcome to the lane. Glad to have you at the party. What the heck? <laughs> I am parking the Rivian here, hopefully not blocking much of the lot. Maybe I'll pull it up a little bit closer. Looks like Alyssa's heading over to the air check just to get them all checked out. Smart car does need new tires, but I think I'm gonna get new wheels for it, the OE specific ones. Let me just inch this up a little bit and then we'll run inside, let them know what's going on. I love discount tire. These guys are always so good to us. They do work on most of our cars. And uh, there we go, just getting it right over to the edge. That's as far over as we can go. That trailer is right on that curb. And uh, yeah, let's go see what they have to say. Alrighty, well, we just dropped off the trailer. They said it'd be about an hour, hour 15. Uh, the This thing says correct tire pressure, but we just had them set, right? Uh huh. So maybe it just needs to learn itself. We'll just let it drive for a little bit. Love smart car stuff. Look, we can just cruise right through here, these little spaces. And uh, there's the truck. I kind of left it in a place where people can get around, I hope. Not blocking anyone. They said they might have to move it. I said, that's fine. Uh, it's that back right tire if you take a look over here. And so they're going to check on it. Hopefully we'll have it done. It's 11.45 by 1 o'clock at the latest. Then we can get the leaf over to the DMV. And uh, man, the day's kind of going quickly, isn't it? As usual. You're not driving the leaf? Leaf has no license plates. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, I guess I could put a fake plate on there and hope nothing happens. Well, you don't need to take the car to the DMV in order to register. I it. need to get the VIN verified in order to register, which means I need to drive it. And so the option is they can give me a temporary plate to do all that, and then I have to go back again. Um, I don't want to do that. So I'll just, I'd rather just do it in one, one visit because I'm going to get the Range Rover's temporary plate. I'm going to get the Leaf's full plate and the trailer's full plate. Okay, well, let's cruise in the uh, smart car. Let's go get some food. All right, we're going to get some breakfast at our local spot, Silver Grill. They have the best cinnamon buns. They do have pretty good cinnamon buns. And uh, breakfast, it's noon, Alyssa. What kind of breakfast is that? Well, that's good breakfast. <laughs> so uh, because we still don't have home charging, again, uh, today's the day we call the, uh, the plumber, I mean the electrician. We're going to go to this building over here on the right because they have plug-ins. No, it's not this one, is it? No. There's another parking garage somewhere nearby that has... It's up and around. It's up to the left. We're going to go up to the parking garage, plug the thing in because it has such a small battery pack. It charges relatively quickly. And uh, even on level two, this car does not have DC fast charging. But I think, when's the last time we charged the Smart? Over a month ago? Uh, yeah, probably. I think it was over a month ago and we are at 30% state of charge, which is 18 miles. What I'm really curious about is does this or our leaf have more range? Either way, we don't need the range. We've proven because we just do little tasks around town. And, I think honestly, this has more. The only reason I think we haven't driven this car is because it's kind of dirty inside. It's a dog collar. Dog collar. Yeah, we need to get it clean. So maybe I'll bring it by Colton's at some point. And we'll uh, mm. use all of his detailing here. Look, another first gen leaf. Professor. Professor, absolutely. Oh my God, I'm gonna fit into this town so perfectly. And another leaf over here. This is, I can't wait to make ours into something special. So the restaurant's right up there. The restaurant's so you know. right up there and the parking garage is just over here. This is nice, they just redid the street. Oh here. yeah, this is finally open. Yeah, nice leaf, beautiful machine. Today is the, the leaf appreciation video. Mm. Is that another one? Is there another one? No. no. See it. All right, let's go plug it in. And here we are pulling into the parking lot. Oh, nice music being played. How about that? So up on the second floor, there are chargers. Thankfully, our town has a lot of charging locations. Just slow, though. They're all just level 2, 30 amp, 208 volt garbage slowness, but better than nothing, especially when we just are popping over to have a quick bite to eat. Let's hope it's available. It's not looking good at the moment because it's just over here. Let's see what we can find. And oh, we are good. There's a bolt plugged in. So we, I've seen this bolt here before actually. So we'll just go right here all the way up. Parking brake. I need to get the parking brake tightened in this. 
Yeah, keep the roof down. There's nothing anyone can take, is there? Okay, roof's going up. <laughs> I'll get I think this charger is actually only six kilowatts shared. <laughs> so power, one kilowatt. That doesn't seem very good, does it? 3.4. Yeah, I think that's all we can get out of this is three kilowatts. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. We've really, you know, fast level two charging solves a lot of need, a lot of need for less DC charging. And yeah, there we are, 16 amp. So it's 32 amp split. Then there's these BTC units over here. Are these available? Because this thing's been dead forever, but I've never seen it with a screen on. So charger offline, but this one's available. 30 amps available current. Oh, wow. I've never actually used one of these ancient things. Um, EV pump. Why would they have a charge point and a new one here? But I'm going to pull the car over here, see if we can get 30 amps. It says it's available. So I just plugged it in, swiped my card, and now it's charging. Why can't they all be like that? Normally I'm not phrasing BTC, but that worked pretty well. And uh, get, get juice. Let's see what it says. Charging over here. If we look in the car, it should indicate 30 amps, 6 kilowatts. We just got ourselves twice the charging speed. Very nice. Man, that thing has like never been online until... No, I haven't been up here in a while, but I'm glad they fixed it. the moment here. We'll, we'll talk to the guy. Very cool. 1931 Ford. How about that? Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So uh, we just got the text. The truck is done. Let's go down and pick her up. Get her done. Nice day. Perfect day outside, actually. Mm -hmm. No wind. 72 degrees. Couldn't ask for anything better. Range testing weather. Mm -hmm. All right, Alyssa, what's your guess? What's our state of charge? You're pretty good at guessing these things. You guessed the Lucid Air range test uh, on the nose. 71. 71. Okay, let's see. We've only delivered 4.6 kilowatt hours to it. I don't even know how much this thing costs. It should probably tell you pricing. Do you have the keys? Huh. I do. We are at 55%. Close. <laughs> All right, there we go. Will it tell us the cost? Charging, total energy. So it charged me, could it charge me a million dollars or could it charge me a penny? I have no idea. All right, see you later, Alyssa. Picking up the Rivian over there. Well, $154 later, the trailer has a new tire. Unfortunately, the puncture was actually in the back sidewall. Um, because it holds air a little bit, I'm going to ask to keep the original tire. I just wanted to see what it looks like here. So it looks like we do have a different tire on here than what it originally came with. So what I'll probably end up doing is using this as a spare and getting an identical one of these ordered. So when I do tow testing, we at least have four of the same tire on there. But needed this fixed for some stuff coming up, potentially some cross-country towing. We'll see. But uh, yeah, let's go make sure we have that original tire and see if it's in the truck. I don't think it is, but we will do that. And then I just have to order one of the uh, originals that I'll have essentially two spares. Come on, Rivian. Uh, right, let's click unlock on the key. This one, boom, open. Yep, there it is in the truck, nice. Cool beans, so off to go collect the leaf. Finally, days always go a lot faster than I would like them to. By the way, nice thing about opening the Rivian door is I can use my arm when I have the drink, which is pretty sweet. So let's go. Well, it's now finally time to load up the leaf onto the trailer to get the VIN verified. So we got to get these two behemoths out of the way. We have the Model S and the Lucid Air. The Lucid Air, I just did the range test. Come on down. And uh, did 435 miles at 70 miles an hour. It's causing... 436. 435.5. 36. Well, you guessed 36. Alyssa was right on the money. It was pretty impressive, really impressive. But people were like, well, it's because the panel gaps aren't fitting properly. And like, I don't know, that's what the car did. I couldn't have done a better test, I think. So 
Here's my thought. A Mercedes EQS, my friend Tom ran that car, did 390 miles on the aero wheels. This is 435. That doesn't seem like much big of a difference, does it? Mm -mm. So, and then you at least get software that works. I don't know. I'm just kind of, this thing needs some updates. Come on. So what I'm going to do is pull both cars out of here. We're going to throw the Lucid. I don't know whose bolt that is, but I'm going to throw it in front of the bolt. We'll throw the Model S over there, pull the Leaf out, and then maybe I'll put the Model S back in the garage. There's a couple of videos I want to shoot coming up. Once we get the Leaf done, I want to do an update video for our reviews channel of here's everything that's good and bad with our Leaf, a full tour of it. I think it's really important that we cover, you know, expensive cars and cheap cars. We need to get back into the cheap car stuff. It is our e-tron. Our e-tron's over there. And um, we got shafted. Yeah, we got to arrange the driveway a little bit. Um, and then I also want to do Model S versus this. I want to find a Model S dual motor long range to run against this car in an efficiency test. So in an efficiency test, like one you did the other day? That Five was a hours? full range test, just a one hour efficiency test. Oh. I want to actually see if this is more efficient than a Model S. And I'm going to factor in round trip charging as well. I'm not totally convinced at the moment. I don't know, maybe just by a smidge. All right, let's just throw this over here. Yeah, in Colorado, you have to go on an angle to get into your garage or your driveway because of how steep these are. They're insane. We need to get the little driveway thing that you can put right there to help. In we go. We are charged up to 72% state of charge. Pretty good. Um, Got to order the round wheel. Man, so much to do today. Uh, but it's all ready. How is it 2 o'clock p.m. already? That seems insane. I guess we'll put the, uh, the Model S just over here for now. If you take a look up this way. Just throw it right here on the side. Right now we are just clogging the neighborhood with cars. Now let's clear out all the stuff in front of the leaf and load her up. Right, well, time to, uh, time to start up the, the new family. I'm noticing a dent here in the roof. Okay. Not too worried about it though. Won't be a problem for long. So let's start it up. <laughs> Haven't really driven it since we brought it back here at all. So uh, well, that's not good. What is this thing? Man, she fires right into life. Take a look at this. Displaying 44 miles of range. Look at that. Battery temperature is looking good. Take a look at this. 44 miles of range, 77,883 miles. I got to get Leaf Spy all set up so I can see everything, but it's all looking good to me. I'm going to go pull it around behind the trailer. Let's go do that. That's just a guesstimate for now. I'll pull the car on up and we can adjust. Yep. Yep. And there we are, just a quick tie down of the leaf. Got all four corners strapped down. Just about to jump in the Rivian. Gonna wash my hands real quick so I don't dirty the steering wheel. You guys know I hate dirty steering wheels, but we just got a quick tie down on this thing. Just enough to get it a couple miles down the road. Got the fresh tire on there. Let's go get the VIN verified and bring it over to DMV to get it registered. It is time. We got the cars. I got the Model S in the garage. We got the other two up here. We got the leaf on the back of the Rivian. It is time to go get it registered. I'm charging my phone with this kind of cool cyber situation, cyber truck charger. 
I think this is the closest thing to a cyber truck you can get today. <laughs> so let's go to the DMV of all places. Well, we got to go get this thing been verified, then the DMV. I'll update you once that's all done. It went from a really nice day to a really warm day. We got the AC blasting, just pulling away now with the leaf on the back of the truck. The truck will always do its like calculation to feel the weight and the aero drag. Uh, so it's predicting 47 miles at 33% right now. I assume that will go down. Let's just do a quick brake, regen and acceleration test. Make sure the leaf is on there. Don't see much movement, so let's just boogie on through head over to the north side of town we got to swing by the office and uh do some errands so let's go see how this all goes the leaf is holding on just fine i don't have it strapped down as well as i would like but we're just going up the road got a good parking spot right in front of the dmv and here we go inside of the worst place ever let's do it hope we have all of our documents in order i don't know if we do well, we're just walking away and we got the temporary plate. The bells are ringing, all good. Um, for the leaf, they charged me, how much was it? Almost $500. And then she was like, if you get a normal plate, you have to put this EV sticker in the windshield, which is something we've never done. Also, take a look at this, Volvo roof box on a Subaru. That doesn't make any sense, but it's the nice low profile ski rack one. Uh, anyway, looks like the leaf is good to go. We're insured, we're registered. I'm gonna start filming with it. I say we just bring it home, I'll unload it there, and then I'm gonna take y'all for my first legal drive of it. Um, the Range Rover is gonna be a disaster to get titled because I, I bought it from someone who didn't, I don't even know how to describe it. You didn't it's legally like, own like it. Three people removed from the title that I have for it. He didn't legally own it. He didn't legally own it. Yeah, he didn't. No one was. The last two owners didn't register it, so I may have to issue a title bond to get it into my name. That sounds like a disaster. And she's like, we can't even issue a, issue you a temp tag, so that's going to be a disaster. And the trailer, I need to find the title for the trailer, which I don't know where it is, in order to get that registered. So it's all a little bit out of whack. But we got the leaf done, and what an unpleasant experience that was. As usual, I have to record and give him guidance. I'm really not that good at this stuff. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Oh, front looking good? Yep. Oh. Huh? Hey, she's legal. She touches the street legally. Wow. That's the first time that's ever happened to us. Just need to get this blessed, get some olive oil and just dunk her in it talking about what this is just a holy chariot you want to go for a quick cruise around the block in the leaf it stinks in there right. let's go all right let's just go for a quick little drive this is going to be the longest i've ever driven this thing uh hell yeah what do you mean the longest well we only drove it around the block and then we drove it up and down the street a couple times during when we filmed the video getting this thing is there no one pedal drive is on this maybe not thing is awesome full power she boogies not showing any signs of regen a little bit a little bit of regen maybe if i put it in eco mode i get a little bit more very nice what a machine let's go out wow, look at that here. modded audi and that's a stock Audi just with roof bars. It's a Q8, and then there's a nice little that alpha right grill. There. Yeah, that's all stock. And yeah. here's a nice little alpha. That's cute. Yeah. That neighbor hates us. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's someone who called animal control on us when the dog barked when Blue was stuck under the fence. When Blue was stuck under the porch, and firefighters had to come and get us. Get them. <laughs> well, they still you, called. You left, and then I had to have the firefighters cut Blue out from underneath the deck. I literally left for like two days, and it was a disaster. Emergency has to be called. <laughs> wow, well, we're cruising in the leaf. Okay, well, I'm gonna drive this thing everywhere. I love it. It drives so nice. You have no idea. I got 43 miles of range in eco mode. Cruising, perfect weather, 70 degrees and sunny. I'm gonna bring it to Colton's, give it a nice wash. The interior needs to be burned. Needs a new interior. And we gotta remove whatever this is up here. It's pretty easy. Yeah, just not, well, not, not good tint. But the windows are tinted. Can I pull it? I mean, yeah, I don't care. It's like one of my favorite hobbies. 
I'm not a fan of split tent windshields. Well, we're going to do a full acceleration run, so you better hold on tight. Oh my God! Don't leave the this the stickiness behind, Melissa. Eh, it's going to be left behind. Oh my God! Ah! All right, let's go. Full power. Burning rubber. Traction control. There we go. Full beans. 40, 50, 60, in the lead! <laughs> what a machine! Oh, goodness. Oh, my God! <laughs> it has the slowest steering ratio I've ever experienced. Oh, hell yes! Nice horde! Love it. Love this thing. So, I guess I'll cruise around in this for a little bit, but I do need to get the Lucid over to Colton's ASAP as possible. So, let's do that. And then, uh, my new daily driver. I'm really loving it. I'm holding you to that. Yeah, I'm going to take it everywhere. I just need the steering wheel clean. Well, you join us over at the EA on our way to drop the Lucid off at Colton's and let's see, climate control off. So here, uh, what the heck? Sometimes when this iPhone cable hits the screen, it bricks it. So the screen's very, doesn't allow multi-touch. I've been preconditioning the battery pack because we left the house with about 17% state of charge. I parked it at like 22 or 23% state of charge, if I remember correctly. So it definitely did like a huge calibration. But one of the things I wanted to do was just double check some findings in my charging curve. Um, because I went zero to 100, of course, and I kind of want to see if the middle was lower because of it uh, thermal derating. So even though this says it's a balanced charger, I'm pretty sure it's a dedicated one. I don't know for certain. Wow, it's like that Kia has like uh, uh, shadows in it, but they're pretty much not taking any juice. So we should be able to get the full thing that this charger claims to give us. So let's plug in and let's just, I'm just basically not recording anything, just double checking some of my charging stuff before I post the video. So initiating charging, let's see what happens here. 43 cents a kilowatt hour. Why are you flashing refresh rate? Come on, figure your stuff out, iPhone. <laughs> uh, so I think they're supposed to auto detect flash and change the frame rate slightly. Maybe if I change the camera, there we go. Now I'm zoomed in, but at least it's not flashing. All right, let's see what it says, shall we? Connecting, I don't think the battery's as warm as possible, but that's okay with me. I kind of want to see if that matters. Let's see what we get out of this thing. 130. 200. 222. 250. 278, it's just pulling up pack voltage. 283, 276. 275 that's where it kind of wants to hang out 280 are you gonna do more why are we bouncing weird 250 so it wants 245 to 250 at like 13 or 14 percent i'm just going to basically reference these against my notes i'll charge it up because we're going to be giving it to colton for a little bit and i got to take it to denver in the morning so I'm going to charge it up to at least 50% state of charge. Uh, that's probably all that's needed. And then I can do another charging test tomorrow recorded with a really warm battery pack. So the less high I charge it today, the less miles I need to put on it tomorrow. So we'll just charge it up to 50% and then we'll head over to Colton's. But uh, it should be pretty quick to 50%, I would say. And then Colton's going to film an out-of-spec detailing video as to what the heck he wants to do with the really thin paint on this thing. We'll see what he comes up with. Well, we are charged up to 50% state of charge. And the one thing I'm finding with the Lucid is it gives a huge peak down low as it pulls pack voltage up, dumps all the current, and then it just kind of dies in noodles. Now, the battery pack wasn't totally worn here, but you can see this, 121 kilowatts at 50%. One, my Model S, I'm just trying to think, will do 160 at 50%. Um, here we were doing 185 at 27%. So the temperatures aren't perfect for max max speeds. But like, um, 
I, and I noticed that during the charging test as well. This thing will give you a huge peak number. Again, 351 kilowatts peak, but the actual way as which it holds the power is, is kind of weak sauce in my opinion. Uh, I actually prefer Tycon's charging curve, which is basically just walking its way dead at 250 kilowatts all the way to a peak of 270, 271 at 50, 51, 52%, and then it kind of falls off. So I would be really curious, and I have all the data, I just need to crunch the numbers. Does the Tycon add more kilowatt hours in a certain period of time than this car? I think the answer would be yes. However, this car is more efficient than Tycon. However, you can't go off EPA numbers for this when we talk about how many miles per minute added because Tycon far exceeds EPA and this far underperforms EPA. So that's basically my thought process. By the way, that Cummins sounded awesome. Um, that's my thought process on all of this, which is we need to base all of the numbers off of our 17 mile an hour test and I got to crunch all the data. But my gut feeling tells me Tycon might be the still the charging king when it comes to this kind of stuff. What do you think, Alyssa? What's your gut feeling? Oh, I mean, I bet it's better than this. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know you don't like the car so much. Well, no, just because the Porsche has, you know, probably has better engineers. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but yeah, they've had more time. They've had their legacy. Well, that's the certainly on some things they have a little bit more experience i don't know about the ev side i gotta crunch the numbers before we do too much speculation then you can start you know throwing slang and start trashing companies left and right i'm not trashing them i'm just telling you my opinion i know that's your opinion not mine i don't necessarily agree with it at the moment but i gotta crunch the numbers i gotta see what it's all about i have the brand new porsche charging curve with the newest software uh and i'm gonna compare it to this and we'll see but that was a pretty disappointing charging session. Just how long did it take to get from 12% to 50%? It took 17 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's not that great, is it? Yeah, but do you have to think about how many more miles you're getting from 12 to 15% versus like my e-tron from 12 to 15%? Yes, but that's what I was just saying. You can't base it off EPA because Tycon overperforms and this underperforms EPA. So we need to base it off our test, which is why we'll crunch the numbers. Covered that point, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to have this episode be a downer on Lucid, but I got this thing maxed out, full AC. The whole way over to the charger was this way as well. I can hear the fan going, but barely anything is coming out of these vents. And yes, they're wide open. And uh, we have them right here to come out of the vents. So to me, it seems like there's, um, yeah, there's some sort of uh, like a flap that's not opening to allow it to blow on my face. Now, I know there is some kind of reset procedure in the car. Also, we're gonna go the back way over the Pullman's because there's so much traffic. Um, I know there's some sort of reset process in the car, but it's just like barely puffing out of these vents at all. And it just sounds like it's coming up the windshield, but we do not have the windshield selected. Also, the AC seat, since we're on the topic, kind of not good, just weak sauce ventilation. The rest of the seat's great. The massage, good, everything else. How is the massage? The massage is great. Better than Audi's? I think so, yes. Oh, God. You want to try it? I can't. Why? Because I'm a passenger. What are you talking about? I thought the passenger can't get a massage. No, that was in the Genesis GV60. Right, how, would you like to try the, the Wave? How's it feel? I don't know where it is. What do you mean? I can't. Oh, it does your butt. Yeah. Oh. I want to stretch. It might vibrate the oh. seat. Oh. Why is vibrating go stretching? <laughs> I don't know, but it actually works. It feels silly at first, but I was like, wow, that's kind of nice. Like, is it trying to break up the fascia or something? I don't know. And we have arrived at clear detailing, 47% plenty of charge for storage for the night. That's healthy for it. There's Colton getting into his Model 3, backing it up. He's got a Model Y in the shop. <laughs> Just took a second for the rear sound to come on. Mine does that from time to time. And here's the EQE. We got to take this and run this through all the testing. So looking forward to seeing how this does and all of the driving and other stuff to come. I think this should be a pretty popular car. I think it's uh, 
Mercedes needs to get their uh, their EVs out a little bit more. They're really pushing GLB, I've seen. So, uh, hey there. Hey. How's it going? Good, good. What's the uh, what's your plan with this thing? So we're gonna do a test spot of PPF on this to see if it can hide some of those scratches. It's kind of the big question here because we're a little, I don't know, trying to figure this thing out. Well, should we explain? So basically the paint's really thin, yeah. which means it's almost too thin to go in and thoroughly correct safely. Right. Yeah, and right. so we're trying to figure out a way to make the car look as good as possible for Peter. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking maybe going with a PPF would be yeah. covering it up is that what, what uh, am i right yeah so we had a conversation this morning and um he's a little ocd and one of the big things was scratches on there so i kind of figured if we were just polishing it it's not going to get to the level that he's going to be happy with so i'm trying to find a good solution for him um because kind of a weird situation for this this just made a noise yeah it sounds pretty cool doesn't it <laughs> that was kind of neat it's the outdoor sound situation all right, well, we're leaving you with this and we're taking the EQE. Okay, sounds good. And now you join us in the Mercedes EQE 350 Formatic. I don't think I can tell you how it drives or show this car in motion because it's still under embargo. But can you go heated and cold seats at the same time? Uh, I like it. <laughs> That's all I needed. And 10 degrees of rear steering. I can't tell you how that feels, but you can imagine. It's just the best freaking headrest on the planet. Oh. Does this one have massage? It's a pretty base car. Let's see if it has massage. How do I do it? I hit home. I hit comfort. And pff, no massage. Cheap now. Mm -hmm. But look at this ambient lighting up here. This just feels solid. But of course, I can't tell you how it drives, so... Now the next day, some friends of mine borrowed the Rivian for the night. They had a good time. Looks like it's in sport mode because it's lowered down. The Leaf is back. Alyssa took this out this morning and I just have to do some errands, run some swaps. So Colton played around with the paint protection film on the Model S and thinks that that's the best way to go. I am, sorry for the filming quality. I am going to uh, clear detailing right now. Interesting, only a seat back cover on the passenger side, not the driver's side. Hmm. I'm going to go down to Colton's and leave the Leaf there and pick up the Lucid Air. <laughs> I'm just excited to drive my Leaf. Uh, pick up the Lucid Air and film Model S versus Lucid videos today. And then I also need to swap on the aero wheels for the Model S at some point. So, okay, we got a lot of, a lot of stuff to do today. A lot of efficiency testing. Got to get it all in before the winter comes. So let's go cruise around in the Leaf. Take a look to the, take a listen to the startup sounds in this thing. <laughs> so Japanese and you can choose from different ones. Looks like the battery's a little chilly, which is nice. And uh, 32 miles of range. I hope that's enough to get over to Colton's and then over to the EA station before it comes back here. But we'll see. Might <laughs> gotta learn the car. So let's go head over to Colton's. So it is 18 miles to get over to Colton's in the Leaf. Well, in any car, I guess. And it's predicting 32 miles. But if I pull this back again, it goes into eco mode. Now it's predicting 36 miles. So that seems like pretty good. I think uh, that's plenty to get to his shop, then the Electrify America station to Chatamo charge up and then go. You got to stay on a tether to Chatamo chargers in this car without any AC charging. We should probably replace the AC onboard charger. I think that'll make a good video. But um, yeah, we only have DC charging in this thing because the onboard charger is dead. That's really the only major mechanical issue with it. Other than that, it drives wonderfully. And um, yeah, what a perfect day it is. Really a perfect day. I ran into my friend Adolf behind me. He's got the Golf R. Adolf is our friend who works at uh, Porsche. He's just become a great personal friend. We were on the phone. We did a little drag race in the Leaf versus his Golf R. But I've used all the power because we've been ripping it down the highway. So I think we actually, just to make it to Colton's and back to the shop, I really think we have to go to the Electrify America station just to make uh, make the run over. So there we go. We'll see you later, Adolf. He's on his way to Denver. It was really, really fun to see him go by. But there it goes. Nice golf R he just got from our friend Fred. <laughs> Ripping it. That's awesome. All right. Let's go charge this thing up because I don't think we'd make the round trip.
And we got a flight. Is this a commercial flight coming into Loveland? Very interesting. So I should have clarified, we could have easily made it to Colton's with the charge remaining, but I don't know if we could have made it back to here. I also don't want to leave the leaf with the battery completely dead. So I want to take care of this thing, even though maybe we'll upgrade the battery one day. So if I didn't drag race Adolf for the last, uh, I don't know, two miles, doesn't sound like much, but that's a lot for this leaf. We're going for it, excuse me, everyone. Um, this is leaf stuff here. We're saving the planet. Um, excuse us, sir, we're saving the planet. Please wait. Thank you. Uh, yep, gonna go plug into the Chatamo. Let's hope there's no Outlander plug-in or something else there. So, squeezing through traffic. Let's run over to the EA station. Of course, there's a Model S blocking the charging station, not plugged in. What is going on there? That does not look, a good, look like a good situation. We have two ID4s. What What is going on here? Just no one there blocking the spot? Um, that's not good. So I guess what I'll do is I'll just pull around the backside. Why would they just park there? Maybe the car ran out of charge and a tow truck took it there or something? That's the only thing I can think of because what a terrible move to just park there and not plug in your car. Nice spec countryman, that looks really nice. So here's what we'll do. We'll just pull around the backside. Oh, from Florida? 60, so they probably ran out of charge. I'm inching all the way forwards as far as I can. We've crashed into the curb, but it's a leaf, so we can do that. Um, how do we open up the charging port here? What the heck, Tesla owners? God damn it. Don't they know there are leafs on the road? Let's hope that cable can reach. What? There's literally just no one here and a Model S blocking it. Uh, I, I'll drive this leaf up on the uh, on the curb, I don't care. Let's see if we can get it to reach. Yes, I think we can. All right, let's open up the port. Here we go. All right, come on, baby. In you go, nice, locked in. Proper leaf stuff. Initiating charging. <laughs> How about that? Don't know what the heck is going on here. This is pretty crazy. And they even have... Yeah, I don't know. The car is just sitting here. Nice, clean Model S. I doubt it ran out of charge. It's got an old man hat in there, so they usually are good at optimizing charge. Nice ID4 is charging. Free charging. Well, let's just juice it up to 50% or something like that. I don't really know how fast this thing will charge, but man, that was fun seeing Adolf on the road. Thank you for choosing EA. Just tell me how fast we're charging. There we go. 40 kilowatts. Big number. That's good. 39. It's going down. 38. <laughs> there goes another leaf. Not sure if they need to charge, but man, that Model S dude blocking the spot. Not cool. I'm charging up just enough to get back to here in the leaf. Hopefully I won't be too long, but I am walking over to Starbucks to get, of course, the strawberry acai. And just arriving back at the mighty leaf. Got the, of course, out of spec Starbucks drink. No sign of the Model S owner. One of the ID4s has departed. The other one still here. Let's see, we are at 64% doing 12 kilowatts. I would hope that's enough to do a 16 mile round trip. So I can't wait on this car. We added 4.5 kilowatt hours in 13 minutes. <laughs> but that's how long it took to get my drink. So just stop charging, heard the Chatamo port unlock, I think. Sometimes you have to wait for the light to go off. There we go. And time to leave this thing here back at the Chatamo port. Man, it is nice that EA left the Chatamo. As much as I'm like, let's just rip all the Chatamos out. Now that I own a Chatamo car, I'm fighting to save its death, of course. All right, let's get a Colton's. Wait, the Model S owner just got back to his car. So let's see what he has to say about blocking the spot and just see what's going on. Why were you parked there not charging? Because it couldn't charge. Oh, couldn't get it to charge? Yeah. But it charged fine on this one. Yeah, I don't have the um, Chadmo. Yeah, the Chadmo adapter. Yeah. yeah, maybe next time, if you wouldn't mind, just not leaving it in front. Really? Yeah, because this is the only Chadmo here. The rest are just CCS. So sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. You have a good day. Right. And I think that's the nicest way to do it. Just 
a dude who doesn't understand. He thought they're all open, so hopefully he won't be blocking any chargers anytime and soon. And welcome back over to the shop. I feel like I'm here every day. The Mighty Leaf doing great. I was just cruising. It makes no noise. It's so comfortable. Love it. Hey there. How you doing? I don't mean to show up on all the other cars you have here, but uh, we got a real spicy meatball in the parking lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so are you done with this thing? It's been in here for days. Well, I've had to do a few things. Just finishing up coating today and should be ready to go. Dang, looks really cool. Well, that'll be neat. Should have yeah. gone for white seats, but that's all right. They oh, they are white seats. What? Okay, great spec. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I just saw the black carpet. Well, and then we did the canvas bag back here. This is oh, actually yeah. One of my, um, I'm going to go the other way. Did you get the canvas bag idea from Alyssa? I actually had them before I even met you guys. Oh, okay. Before we even met up. They're going to sponsor us. I love this stuff. I know. It's really good. It's so good. Well, you know, we only do sponsorships with things we like. Yeah. And we like canvas back. It's just the best. You can see how it's it just Velcros in perfectly. Yeah, and this customer's got some dogs, so this is perfect because it like wipes away easy. Yep. Easy to vacuum. We have it in our e-tron. It's just the yep. best. You have it in your car? Mm -hmm. Yep. The best. So yep. cool. Canvas back. Recommend purchasing. Well, we've unfortunately downgraded to the Lucid Air. Oh, we got a Hot Wheels situation i forgot i found this yesterday what is it a lucid air hot wheels where'd you find that target oh fancy yeah i figured peter would like that. yeah walmart definitely would not carry the lucid air that is a target only right. <laughs> see ya yeah. all right well now we're in the hundred and fifty four thousand dollar car i think the nissan leaf costs more than one wheel a little glitch though anyway Let's uh, let's go compare this to the Model S. I got to get a video up today, so that's why I'm stealing this. And then, wow, it, this thing is just, it sit, I sit so perfectly on the inside. I like the Lucid Air quite a bit. I really do. All right, swapping cars, much less sticky of an interior than the Nissan Leaf. The Leaf needs a whole interior, clean, Grand Wagoneer, very nice and silver. That looks good. Homebound. I think we'll have enough range in this car, unlike the Leaf. Here we go, merging onto the highway in the Lucid. I think we should give it the full beans. I don't know about you guys, but we're just gonna leave a little bit of space in front of us, just a tiny little bit, and ready? Three, two, one. Crazy. <laughs> Lots of acceleration in this thing, and this is the slow one, just totally insane. That's a nice looking leaf you got there. That's a nice looking leaf you got there. Yeah, you like my leaf? Yeah, that's, what is that? Racing hot red? Yeah, chili pepper red because she's spicy. Oh. It just went from 90 to 100% in about 25 seconds. So it's a real fast charger. Oh. Or the BMS totally has no idea what's going on. One or the other. Well, really. 